is XL. Let's go. We finally got it after two years of waiting. Yeah, it's been a while. But immediately after arrival, I unboxed it and have been printing nearly non-stop for the last four days. Though as a result of it being only four days, this is more of a first impressions and not a full review as that will come later. Most of it has been positive so far, though I do have some complaints. Not really big, but let's get straight into it. Let's start with the assembly. It actually took me 12 hours to assemble this entire printer, though part of that probably had to do to live streaming it, as that took a little bit of extra time. Also, this is the two-tool semi-assembled version, so that also made it a little bit longer. But aside from that, the assembly wasn't exactly flawlessly either, as I did have two issues. One related to the filament sensor. I actually could not get the second tool to recognize it. Okay. It should be sensing it. Which is kind of funny because the first one worked totally fine. The second one I had to push really hard and eventually got it to work. That was after like 20 or 30 minutes though. So yeah, I'm not sure what was really wrong with that. Surprisingly, I've actually still been having that issue every time I've tried to change out filament on the second tool. The first tool has no issue. So not sure what that is. The second issue is that the LCD panel was kind of glitching. By that, I mean the USB stick would not get recognized at all. The screen and everything was totally fine. So I ended up talking to the Prusa chat and had an hour long chat with them. And we ended up figuring out that it was the cable. The cable was a little bit loose on the back. So I ended up having to unplug it and then plug it back in. But after that, it's actually been working fine. So yeah. And when I did get that working, we did our first print. The first print, I used both tools and actually printed this articulated lizard and managed to break it immediately after it. And the print didn't exactly look great, but that was because I was doing uh, silky filament, silky PLA, which is very stringy and I've never had very many successes with it. I've also found that the silky filament it tends to be very brittle, which is probably why it broke. The black part looks totally fine, and once I cleared up all the strings, it actually looked pretty good. I'll have an image up there for you. Next up is one of my flicade cases that just works. I just hit slice the file and put it on the printer, and it printed pretty good. Looks wise, it even looks pretty good, and I'll have a comparison next to an Ender 3 case. And then also a lid compared to a Prusa Mini using a G-code trick that I showed in a previous video. But it's also worth mentioning that this case took 19 hours, whereas the Ender 3 case that I'm showing you right now took one day and six hours for the same exact thing. The settings were both on 0.2, though granted the XL does have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So that is a slight difference. Also, while we're on the topic of speed, the Prusa XL is definitely not one of the slowest machines. Granted, it's also not very fast when you compare it to something like the Bamboo Lab. I do think this will be improved as time goes on though, as we saw with the Mark IV when input shaping came along. Prusa did state that input shaping would come to the Prusa XL. It's just more of a matter of when, as Prusa typically takes forever to actually ship things. Along with this lid and case, I've also printed this lid and case along with this lid, and I've printed a whole bunch of switch plates that use the dual color materials. And they actually look pretty good. And here's some more. You can see, yeah, this one is a little bit stringy, which probably has to do with the filament, but it very well could do with the printer, as I have seen a little bit more stringing than I would typically expect. By far the best thing about all these prints though is that I've actually not had to do anything after slicing it. Once I've sliced them and put them on this SD card and hit print, they've just printed. I've not had any issues as far as just getting it to work. So for me, it has been pretty reliable at least in the last four days. Along with not having to change anything on the printer, that new leveling system is absolutely great. I haven't even have to adjust the Z height anymore like I did with the Prusa Mini. So literally I just hit print and all the prints work perfectly. Okay, so we've gotten through all the parts that I actually really like about this machine. The thing is, is that it's not all wonderful. 
Granted, these things that I'm about to bring up are more minor issues and could probably be fixed via software or some minor tweaking. The biggest annoyance that I've had definitely has to do with this filament. Whenever I've unloaded it, changed it, or really tried doing anything with replacing filament, it's been a real pain. The reason for that is this really long PTFE tube. This PTFE tube has caused it to, like you have to pull it and then you have to wind the spool back up. And when you're putting it in, you just have to keep pushing it until it actually allows you to have the motor pull it in. And the motor only really pulls it in an extra like, like that far with my fingers, maybe an inch or two, it's not very far. And then to make things worse, when you do eventually run out of filament and pause it, you kind of have it stuck in there. At least I had it stuck in there when I got it. Granted, that may have been because I didn't actually look at this and I just immediately hit yes. And what it was asking me was whether or not it had unloaded successfully, which apparently it had not, as it was kind of stuck in here and I couldn't pull it out. So as a result, I ended up unscrewing this top part right here where the PTFE tube connects to the main extruder and ended up pushing it out. And then I also had to reset the printer and that made the print that I was printing actually fail or fail as it was more of my fault in the first place. Had I just hit it and not done it, then it would have been fine. But there was no button to say unload farther or anything. It was just blank. I couldn't do anything, which was pretty bad. And then when I finally did get it out, there's a whole long spool of wasted filament, which always annoys me. And that was part of the reason I actually got this printer as I was hoping I could use these thin spools or pieces of filament and just put them in there. Instead, I can't actually do that due to how long the PTFE tube is. Granted, with the PTFE tube issue, I do think that Prusa could eventually allow us to put the filament somewhere on top of the printer, somehow create a mount, and then it just feeds directly in here and you just need to remove the PTFE tube entirely. To me, that would actually make using this printer a lot better in general for multiple reasons that I just mentioned right now. The last issue that I've had is definitely more of a software related one as every time it goes to probe the bed for leveling, it, it leaves little marks because it actually heats up the nozzle and the filament oozes out. And the thing is, is that actually shows up on the print. As you can see, there's little black dots and it's not absolutely great. So there we have it. There is my recap of the Prusa XL over the last few days. And those are my first impressions. Personally, it's been a pretty good machine. I just have some minor issues that I do think can be worked out even after I've already gotten it. It's not like I've been seeing online. I have been seeing people online that have had major issues like print quality issues. They can't get it to work at all. For me, that has not been the case. I'm hoping that's just a quality issue that has already been fixed because those that I've been seeing online that do have that were some of the orders with like first couple of seconds. Anyways, like I mentioned up front in the beginning of the video, I'll probably have a review six months to a year and out when I've actually totally got to test it. I'll probably be doing other videos with the Prusa XL in the meantime, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention was those lights. Those lights have actually been pretty epic. I know it's a minor thing, but yeah, definitely worth mentioning. It was epic to see when I woke up in the morning. So yeah. Praise <laughs>